We're gonna talk about this, the star of the show, the chain link, but not yet. We're gonna talk about the posts and how far they need to go, where you need to have them, and where you need to have that terminal post. What is a terminal post? A terminal post is a bigger post than your standard line post. And you see these things such as at gates, ends, corners, and terminations up by the house. Now the question is spacing. How far apart? Typical spacing is 10 feet, nothing further than 10 feet. So if you have a spacing that is 14 feet, you're gonna use three posts. You're gonna use an end, a line post, and another end. Now don't forget, your ends are bigger than your line posts. Let me show you. This is an inch and five eighths line post. The gauge is very, very small. It's a .065, which is a residential gauge. You can use this as a line post. This right here is a little bit bigger. This is an inch and seven eighths post. It's .065 gauge as well. You can use this as a terminal post. Typically what we do is we will use this as a line post and we will use this one as a terminal post. Now this post right here is a two and three eighths post. All these posts are outside dimensions, not ID, they are OD. Keep in mind that your inch and seven eighths post should not be used for a gate. You wanna upsize two, two and three eighths. Here in our company, we have different standards. We don't use the inch and five eighths for a post. Our smallest line post is an inch and seven eighths and our terminal post for our terminals and for our gate posts are two and three eighths. We just wanna build a little bit beefier of a, uh, of a fence and have a tougher product at the very end. We already have two posts in the ground. We have one two and three eighths and another two and three eighths over there. So this is 14 feet, three inches from inside to inside. So we're gonna want another post in there at seven feet, one and a half. That's my center. We use marking paint to mark where we wanna put our posts at. That brings me to another thing. First thing to take into consideration before you even start your fencing project. You're gonna to wanna to call into 811 and get locates. What they're gonna come out and do is they're gonna locate all the utilities going through your yard because what you last wanna do is make your fence more expensive because you accidentally pounded a post through a fiber optic line, a cable line, telephone line. The opportunities to hit something are endless. Make sure to put some white pen flags out or to get some white marking paint and put some dashes on the ground so that, that way they, they can mark the utilities in those areas. So we're gonna get out a string. You're gonna set up a string line from end to end, no matter how far apart they are. So end point to end point in one straight line. When we go to set our post, I'm gonna offset from the string just a little bit because I want this post to be in the center of these two bigger posts. So we wanna be off the string by a quarter of an inch. The two foot level, we'll get you through all this task. So obviously we have to get these posts in the ground somehow. You can A, set them in concrete by digging a hole, or you can pound. Today, we're gonna pound. So we're done driving now. We landed on top of a rock and we know that because we started going just a little crooked. So what we ended up doing was bending the post back into place, which is just fine. Normally we'd go a little bit further, but we're down to about 34 inches in the ground, which is good enough for us. We're gonna go ahead and cut the top off. We're gonna keep this really simple. How much post you need out of the ground? 45 inches out of the ground minimum. But be careful when measuring from the ground because sometimes the ground will have humps in it or if you don't compensate for that hump and your fence doesn't go over the hump, you're gonna have to go through the hump. You're gonna have to make a trench for your fence to go in there. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of a cushion and let's just go ahead and go 46 inches. Right now that's gonna give us roughly one inch of a gap between the ground and the bottom of the chain link. So we're gonna go ahead and put a mark at 46 inches and then we're gonna add four inches to that 46 inches, which is gonna take us up to 50. Now these two marks are important. This mark, the 46 mark, is marking the top of the line post. That's how tall the top of our line post need, are, need to be. But since this is a terminal post, we need that additional four inches so that, that way we can terminate that top rail because the top rail sits on top of the post. 
So we need to have a little extra meat up here of some terminal post to be able to terminate that rail. To remember that, we're gonna put a C. C for cut. Don't put a C on that first mark. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on this post. So we're gonna mark at 46. We're gonna cut right below that ring. We're gonna go ahead and move our string from the bottom to the top. We're gonna set the string up on that very first mark at 46 inches. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have 46 inches beneath from the string to the ground. We wanna make sure that that chain link is gonna clear and then we're not gonna to have to dig that into the ground. We have 45 and 7 eighths, so we're good. Now if I didn't have that, what we'd wanna do is we'd wanna raise one of these two ends or maybe we'd want to raise both of them or if it's just a little tiny hump maybe you'd want to dig that hump out and trench that chain link in depending on how deep it goes i'm talking like a hump like maybe that big we're going to go ahead and take our marker you're just going to want to mark where that string hit on that post okay now we can take the string down It's time to start with the framework of the fence. The first piece of the framework is gonna be the top rail. We're gonna use an inch and seven eighths by inch and three eighths loop cap. It goes on just like that. Now, if you look at it, it's funky shaped. There's a reason. The offset side, the side that is closest to the face of the post is gonna be the fabric side. Now, we need to go ahead and prepare for the top rail and the tension wire. These things right here are called brace bands. They're nice and thick, and they pull off the center of the post. We need not to get this confused with this. This is a tension band. This one comes off of the face of a post. This one comes off of the center of the post. A tension band is used for t attaching chain link. So we're not ready for that yet. We're back to the brace band. This is coming off the center. We're gonna put two brace bands per post. We're gonna put one on the bottom for the tension wire and we're gonna put one on the top to receive the ends of the top rail. Now what we're gonna need is we're gonna need some 5 16 by inch and a quarter galvanized nuts and bolts. Why do you want galvanized, you ask? Because you don't want it to rust. This is an inch and 3 8 aluminum rail end. This is what the top rail is gonna land into. So if this was going to be a corner and we had to terminate the top rail right here, and we had to terminate the top rail right here, our brace bands would then be stacked. So what we need to do is the lowest one needs to come up like that, and our top one needs to rotate so it comes down. The offset allows the brace bands to overlap each other and then sit level. Now, another tricky part. Which way do the nuts and bolts go? And the bolt head should be facing the unsecured side. So outside of your yard. Right now I'm just putting a nut and a bolt through the bottom one, which is gonna be for our tension wire. And then we're gonna put our rail end on. Just like that. And the bolts and the nuts are facing towards me. The bolt heads are facing out because I'm on the inside. We're gonna do exactly this step on the other post. We had to cut it in half over at SWI because it wouldn't fit in my car. Okay, so the line that we put on the post, very beginning, the very bottom line, that is going to mark the bottom of the top rail. So we want the bottom of the top rail to terminate into that line. So my pipe is swedged in. What that means is this is a male, my other piece of the pipe is gonna be a female. It's gonna slide over each other. From the post to this line in the top rail, I have 53 and a half inches. So the question is, how much does this take up? From the post to the back side of the rail end, I have an inch and a half. So we need to take an inch and a half off of 53 and a half, which is gonna leave us with 52.
Now, if we screwed up our measurement, we can cut it one more time. We're gonna slide this on. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this on at the same point, right at the bottom of that line. Now for the tension wire. What is the tension wire and is it necessary? So if you've ever seen chain link and it curls out, well, what's happened is it's been kicked so many times. That's what the tension wire does. It's to hold the bottom of the chain link nice and line. We're gonna use a two stranded 12 and a half gauge twisted wire. This is also gonna go on the chain link side. To do it right, it needs to go on before the chain link. Some people just take this and wrap it around the post and then tie a knot in it and then improvise that way. We don't do that because we think it looks ugly and it's improper. It's a lot easier just to buy the extra brace band and to terminate the tension wire that way. Keep everything looking nice and clean. Now I'm gonna use my nippets to go ahead and cut that. If you're looking for anything with a really nice sharp blade and some longer handles, is probably gonna be the tool of choice that you're gonna be looking for to cut this kind of stuff. This is a really good bolt cutter as well. This will cut through nine gauge chain link very easily. Another good brand of pliers is Klein pliers. We're gonna want this about three inches off the ground. Here I'm using the Klein pliers. And again, we're looking for about that three inch mark. This is what we call our T-handle. We're gonna actually use this to tighten the wire. But you wanna be careful not to break it. There is a breaking point. Right there, it's pretty nice and tight. So we're gonna unwind and then tie it back to itself. You could also use a chain strainer, anything that's gonna grip the wire and pull it. And then suck it all the way down, just like you did on the other side. So now, let's cover our steps we've done so far. We've got our post driven, we have our top rail on, our loop cap on, our tension wire on. All right, now it's time to lay out stuff for installing the fabric. What we're gonna need is these things, which these things are called tension bars. We're gonna need one at that terminal post, we're gonna need one at that terminal post. Now we need to lay out our tension bands. We're gonna lay four out here and four out there. Some of you may get away with three. We use four. Now it's time for the exciting part. The running of chain link. Now just so you're all aware, standard is 50 feet, 50 feet per roll. So if it's brand new, it's got 50 feet in it. This is a 48112. It's an 11 gauge wire, it's a two inch diamond, and it's 48 inches tall. We're gonna unroll it and try to stand it up as best as we possible so it's easier to work with. This is where you're gonna want some, some bolt cutters or some heavier cutting pliers or Whatever have you. We're gonna cut that tab off. We're gonna bend it down, just so it looks a little bit cleaner. We're gonna insert our tension bar into that first straw. The first tension band should go as close to the top rail as possible. So we're gonna go in that second diamond down. Throughout this process, you're gonna hear me call them diamonds. This is a diamond. Now before I do anything else, I am going to go ahead and set the height. What we want is this knuckle, the center point of that diamond, we want to go in the center of that top rail. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna put a tension band on the fourth diamond. You could do three tension bands, but typically what you see is you see a bow from the post here and a bow from the post here because it's such a long span without a tension band. Go another four. 
and go our last four, which is gonna put us right on top of that tension wire. And that side is done. Now it's figuring out where to cut the chain link at. I'm gonna pull on it quite a bit and I can see that I can almost get this link to the post, but I can't quite get it. So if I do that one, I think that's gonna give us a lot of tension. Don't overstretch it because you're gonna start collapsing these diamonds and shrinking them. So then your fabric's not gonna be nearly as tall anymore. It's gonna start shrinking in height if you over tighten it. So there what I did is I cut this off just like we did at the very beginning. I'm gonna save this link and I'm gonna pull this link out. Now I can untwist it. Now you're left with a straw. Since I cut that bottom straw, we're gonna fold it and throw it away. So let's talk about some stretching tips before we actually start stretching. What you could do is you could, you could have another tension bar and you could put it, so you could have the one in here still and you could have one back here. And you could run two, rat, two or three ratchet straps around or wrap it around the post, back to that tension bar, stretching it that way. Another stretching method that we use is called a chain link rake. This would become our stretch point. We would anchor to some solid piece, maybe a truck, vehicle, or a tree, pull the chain link, stretch it, and then still be able to terminate it to this post. And we would use this on longer runs, you know, 100 feet. You can make these yourself to see how effective that is. See the video in the corner. Today's method, we're gonna use bear holds. A bear hold is where you actually hold a bear. Just kidding. These are two and three eighths bear holds. So what they're designed for is we're gonna take this piece right here and hook it into that tension bar. And then take this other leg, put it around the post and pull on that handle. What's gonna happen as it comes around, it's gonna stretch that chain link. And again, you wanna make sure that it's going at the right height. And I just wanna put one in there. Don't suck it all the way down. And now I'm gonna put on that second bear hold. If I take my hands and I put it over one diamond and squeeze it, I can get a little bit of, I can get a little bit of slack in there, but I can't get a ton. That's just right. All right, now it's time to tie. So I'm gonna use a dressing tool. I'm gonna push down on it and it's gonna lift up that fabric for me so I can tie the post. I'm gonna show you the old school way and then the new way. So these are aluminum stick ties. We're gonna hook it here, as close to the top of the post we can. Put the top rail, we're gonna go around. And it's aluminum, so see how easy I am to bend it with my fingers. Now we're gonna go back to that hook. We're gonna wrap that around. The unfortunate thing about these ties is what can happen is they can untie. As you can kind of see, it's already kind of trying to untie just a little bit right there. One, two, three, yep, four right there. Now that the post is tied, one thing that we wanna do is we wanna dress the chain link. We wanna make sure that it flows nice. What I mean by that is right here, Make sure it flows real nice with that top rail. If you got a lot of waves in it, we call that like a dinosaur's back. You wanna try and pull that out as much as possible. Every nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna hook there. I'm gonna wrap back around. And with that being a top rail, you want to try and get that tail as much pointed back that direction at all so that way nobody gets hooked with it. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's tying with straight stick ties. Let me show you a better way. These are easy ties. We're going to count them out. Uh, we're going to put one right there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna go back halfway and go right there. We're gonna put two more on our post. And one there. This handy little thing is a tie tool. 
we're going to put the tails of the tie into this tool and the drill is going to spin it up and twist them and then trim the tails. These are 11 gauge ties and these will not come unraveled like you saw the aluminum ties. Put it in there, and pull the trigger. Make sure with any kids around, you knock them back to that chain link fence just a little bit so that that way nobody can, kids and stuff can't hit themselves on it. Two more steps and this chain link fence is going to be done. We're going to hog ring the tension wire to the chain link. We want a hog ring right there. We don't want a hog ring to the very bottom because what could happen is the knuckles of the chain link can come undone and then the, and then the tension wire comes out. So we're going to hog ring right there. Right there. So now, as we kick on that fence, that wire goes with it. So that wire is holding the bottom of that chain link in. Last step, just the caps. We gotta put the caps on. They are aluminum. Try and get it nice and level. Don't be out there with a sledgehammer. You're gonna smash the cap and obliterate it to pieces. The only thing that you gotta do after this is give yourself a pat on the back. So we just showed you how to install a four foot residential grade chain link fence. Super easy, but we didn't show you how to install a gate. So make sure and watch this video right here so that you can learn how to install the gate to go along with the fence. Dan with SWI, we are Wyoming's Fence Company and you have a good dang day.